Okay. Welcome. I missed you actually. I had a long time to see you. We don't hear that often actually. <laughs> and the difficult part is that next week I'm going to miss you as well. Since before I started my commitment with you, I made arrangements to see my doctors. Always on Thursday. <laughs> and that's the day that I had free. So on Thursday I'm going to do it. And last time that I was out of here, I went and I had a split sleep test. And this coming Thursday and Friday I'm going to get my equipment. And from now on, I'm going to be sleeping with a mask. You Yeah. A friend of mine, the best philologist that I know that does it, says that since he started sleeping with a mask, he increased his memory. He said, you don't have any problem with your memory, but anyway, it's going to be a good thing. So, what I want you to do first, before we do anything, I want you to close anything, get a piece of paper, get your name on top of it and have a quiz. Every day now my son has a quiz preparing himself for a state test. So we are going to do the same thing here. The first apostle was Andrew, right? Brother. Andrew. And Andrew had a brother, Peter. Do we have any br other brothers in the 12th? Jane and John. Okay. James and John. And then, who are the other double people in the 12th that it's easy to remember that they were friends? Ah, oh, friends. Oh, Philip, the name of my spiritual father that passed away years ago, Bishop Philip, and his friend who had two names. In John is with one name, Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Or what's the other name? Simon. Or Bartholomew. His body is in St. Peter's in Rome. Okay. Then, who are the other apostles that it's not possible to forget? Thomas. Judas, the Iscariot. You can't forget him. Is any other Judas? Yeah. Okay, so we have two Judases. We make them eight, right? And you have Thomas. We have nine from twelve to nine. There are how many? Not bad. Three more. Three. If you give me all the three, you have a name. Oh. Wow. It's not easy. I don't want you to forget these guys, but I want you to remember the three. Uh, that's what we have to write here. That's what you have to write here. So you don't have to write that many. You have to write three. And you have three minutes to do it. If you don't know that in the three minutes, then... I want you to make a table, and in the New Testament we have how many books? I want the number here. And then, in the other list, I want the authors of the books of New Testament. And from those authors, I want you to circulate 
those that are apostles. Hey, you are going to be bishops and priests. <laughs> and one can help you to answer the other. Is Matthew an apostle, one of the twelve? Yeah. Matthias. Is he one of the twelve or not? Matthew? Yeah. There is a apostle called Matthew, one of the twelve. Okay, so then automatically the three becomes two. Okay, then Matthew, Luke. I think I know two. Luke was not one of the twelve. No. Is his name mentioned in the Gospels? No. no. Not by name, but by act. Christ held him as a baby. When he said, let the kids come to me, Luke was the kid that he was holding him. Is Mark one of the twelve? No. Is John one of the twelve? Yes, yes we already have him. <laughs> Who is the author that wrote most of the books of the New Testament? Is he one of the twelve? He is the thirteenth, or the fourteenth if you count Matthias. Okay. Then the other apost the other epistles we have are written by whom? Peter. Peter. Is Peter one of the twelve? Yes. So Peter. John. John. Is John one of the twelve? Correct. Who else? James. James. Is that James this James no, here? No, that's the other James. Good. Who is the James that wrote the epistle? Brother of yeah, the He was, he was the, the first son bishop of Jerusalem. Yeah. Okay. And then do we have anyone else? Tade. Did he write anything in the Bible? No. Okay, so that's not in that list. Do we have another yeah. epistle, very small epistle? In the New Testament, um, Jude. is this Judas? I think so. Yes. No. So, then the question is, who are the other two? And among the other two, does anybody have two names? It's very common at that time to have two names. Okay. I want you by the end of the term to know the twelve apostles and know what they do. The trick I showed you says that you need really to bring them into the last two. Okay, who do we have? We don't have here. Tadeus. Tadeus, yes. Then it's, it, it's one. Matthew. And Matthew that wrote and the Gospels. And one more James and you have them. Okay, I want you very comfortable to go on and have that part written down and be done. Good. Then, the other thing that I would like you to remind me, since they told me that I don't have good memory, is more or less what did we cover so far here. I know. Let's start with a few things. The church administration is of what type? Hierarchical. And what do we mean by hierarchical? There's, there's an order of lower and higher ranks. Okay. Is it democratic? No. Who said that? It's hierarchical. It's Means that goes from the top to bottom. Correct. How many levels do you have? Which are? Uh, bishops, clergy. Bishops, clergy, people. Okay, do we have the same time of organizational and function in all the three? Can the bishops do anything they want? <laughs> That's a trick question. I know, it's not a trick question. Can the, can Bishops do anything they want. No. 
Okay. What are the rules that bishops have to obey and within these rules to do anything they, they can do? Canons. Canons. So, if you have canons here, the question is who makes the canons? The holy councils and the you know, holy spirit. Who makes the canons? Bishops. Well, bishops by consensus. Bishops by consensus. What is the unit of the bishops that makes canons? Councils of the council. Councils. How many councils of bishops made canons? Twenty. Maybe twelve, thirteen. I mean, it depends on, it depends on what, what kind of, of canons. Some were theoretical councils, some were local councils. I mean, I don't remember. Correct. Bounding. Correct. So, which are the bounding canons? Well, for everybody in the ecumenical. Okay. So, we have so seven ecumenical councils that made the canons. Is this right or not? I, I don't think so. Because there's other councils that are binding for everyone. There's a corpus of canons yeah. that was also given by other councils. First, second, Constantinople council is not an ecumenical council, but it's binding for every church. Okay. But is, that, is that because all of the churches have received it? Or I don't think it's necessarily by authority of the council itself, but just the fact that all, all churches have received it recognizes it. Yeah, it's binding for but it's not ecumenical. Okay, and we have one council between the 5th and the 6th Ecumenican Council that didn't deal with any dogmatic issue but only with canons. And the 7th Ecumenical Council gave no canons. Exactly, and we celebrate two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So, we have the canons that they rule what the bishops can do, right? No. The bishop can do whatever he wants. Bishop. The bishop is a canon. Bishop's word is equal in value to the weight of the canon. Is it? Yes. Can he make decisions contrary to the canons? Yes. Yes. As what kind of decisions contrary to the canons? Economy. Okay, by economy. Can economy be the ruling part? It's not supposed to be. It's well, not sure what you mean. an exception. Economy is the exception, something that you take it as a measure to deal with that. So it cannot be a ruling situation to be by economy. Okay, so how the bishops work in making canons and making decisions? Do they make them on their own or not? So what do the bishops do? They make it by consensus. They get together. The okay, they get together and they make decisions in synodical part. So the ruling that we have here is what? Democratic or hierarchical? It's democratic. It's democratic? Nikolai? It's not democratic. It's not democratic. No, not the way wrong. that, not the way at least democracy is perceived in America or in Western Europe. No, because bishops don't make decisions democratically. If they vote, and most places don't vote, if they vote, they vote until they reach a unanimous consensus. And even the guys that disagree will flip their decision to sign what the majority wants. So there has to be unanimous agreement on something. Which is why somebody who's nominated to be a bishop cannot be a bishop, even if there's just one guy out of 50 that says no. Okay, but it's, it, it, That's not the case because we have many elections that the last election to make a bishop is majority and minority. Well, that's... But that's not the point. The point is, is it democratic the way that Americans think of democracy now or not? Okay. If it's not, what is the binding point? It has to be in, in, in spirit of the gospel. It has to be in spirit of the gospel according to the canons. 
which is the main point. Can we have canons contrary to the gospel? No. No. Absolutely sure. Okay. We do not have canons contrary to the gospel. So the guiding authority of the church is the gospel specified by the canons. The bishops guarantee the validity of the canons. They can decide according to the canons, but not against the canons, correct? All of that stuff brings to what concept? That we put it down here as a line. What is the gospel? What is the line? <clears throat> we have the word there as a plural. Now we can have it as a singular. Okay. Singular is the gospel. Canons, that's why they got their name. Because they canonize, they put everything on the line. It cannot go above or below. It has to go straight and it has to be done to that level. So, here we have the bishops. Here we have the clergy. When was the last time that you observed an ordination for a priest? Hmm? Okay, were you in the altar at that time? No, I think uh, hmm? Were you able to see what happens in the altar after immediately the ordination of the priest? So what is going on there? Any idea? Dmitry? What's going on in the altar for the priesthood ordination immediately after the ordination? You're talking about immediately after laying on the hands? No, no, after no. they lay on the hands, ordination continues. Yeah, right. They dressed up yeah, they the new priest. Constantly. After they dressed up the new priest, there is an important point in the liturgy. What is this point? Hmm? Yeah. They give him the lamb. Correct. That doesn't happen every liturgy. It happens only during the liturgy to have ordination to a priest. So, what is that immediately essential significance of that particular fact? When the bishop gives the land to the priest, says what to him? And that defines what is the role of the clergy. Maxim. Say it in Russian. We have plenty of translators. Hmm? Take this, I don't know, it's the Lord Covenant. Yeah? Covenant? It's the Lord? Or agreement or promise? Yeah. That kind of thing? And keep it. Uh, What's the the important point? <coughs> okay. So at that particular point, what do we have? What's the main responsibility of the clergy? To to be a Christ bearer, and give a different interpretation, make it adjustment, or hold it as it is. Preserve it as it is. Okay. Keep, preserve are the important points. So the <coughs> clergymen have mainly many roles, and these roles need to be brought into the parish and its administration, but what's the main point? Why you need to have a priest there? <coughs> I have a friend 
who belongs to the Presbyterian Church. They don't have bishops, they don't have deacons ordained. Priests are ordained by other priests and the laymen. Do they have a church? No. Why not? No, they should speak. They don't have a continuation. They do not preserve anything. So what is the main role that the priest does in the church there? Is this an important point? Is this a required point? He transmits the gospel. Is this the point of the purpose of the priest? Yeah, to bring the gospel to the people. Sacramentally teaching and everything. Do we have an agreement on that? Who is the one who is preaching in church? Bishop. The priest or the bishop? The bishop. Correct. He's the teacher, not the priest. He is the priest the, is the doer. The priest is the doer. And what the priest does? Whatever the bishop tells him to do. But by an ordination, the priest does something without having the bishop to tell him to do. And this is? perform the sacraments, all of them. Mm -hmm. Except for ordination. Or just the main sacrament, the liturgy. All of them except for the ordination. Are you absolutely sure? Well, but and something I was way. reading the I was reading the documents and something there that is a question for me. In the Greek church, if I have to get married and I go to a priest to perform a marriage ceremony, he cannot do it. Hmm. He needs to go to the bishop and get an approval from a bishop, not just an approval, but an approval with a document to do the ordination. Hmm. Among the sacraments, which are the sacraments that even a lay person can do? Baptism. But that baptism then had to be redone by the priest or not? No, it can't be redone. The priest simply comes and reads prayers. Correct. In other words, if I take a kid that has a problem and I baptize him, and I said this baptized, baptized in the name of the Son, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When the priest does the sacrament again, does he say that? No. And there is one particular point. Do you know Alexander the Great? How many do we have? One or two? One. No, we have two. Well, there's two. We have the Greek and the Greek Christian. And wh who is the Alexander the Great, the Christian? The saint. <clears throat> saint. Queer. <laughs> Queer. Is, uh, I'll tell you where. He He's participated in the first ecumenical council. He's from Egypt, that area there. Correct. Alexandria. The Pope of Alexandria. And when Alexander was the Bishop of Alexandria, he had a little kid with him, the one that succeeded him later on. And he is also known as Great. Who is? No. Athanasius? Athanasius. When Athanasius now was a child, around 10 years old, he knew the sacrament of baptism by heart. He had some friends who were not Christians. He taught them about Christ, and then he performed the baptism to them. The entire sacrament. He talked about that with Alexander, the Bishop of Alexandria. Alexander accepted these baptisms as they are. Why baptism as a sacrament is such important that anyone can perform it? Although today we don't use that practice, in the past we did. Who can do the baptism? Correct. Any on Christian. Can you be Christian without being Orthodox? No. 
So any, any Christian that is baptized and chrismated can perform baptism. Any priest can perform liturgy, Eucharism. From that point on, in order for a priest to perform other sacraments, needs to have the okay of the bishop. In the Russian church now, when a priest is ordained, automatically is given the right to hear confessions. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. Okay. This is very strict in the Greek church. The confessors are much fewer than the amount of the priest that you can have in the Russian church. And usually confession is one part that belongs to the bishop, particularly when the bishop was a local bishop. So when you had one town and in that town you had the bishop, the bishop was responsible for the confession, the bishop was responsible for making the weddings, the bishop was responsible to do what other sacrament? That is the least performed sacrament today. Unction. Unction. What other sacraments do we have? And the bishop is responsible to do the ordination. Do, did we make the seven sacraments? You see, I don't ask you that many things to remember. Even for the twelve apostles, I reduce the number to two. Now, sacraments again are seven. Okay. Maxime, seven sacraments. First, the baptism. Second, immediately after, in order to not forget, baptism. After baptism is confession. No. No. After baptism. Ah, chrismation. Chrismation. Then confession. Then confession. Uh, Holy communion. Four. We said the, yes. Unction. Seven. Marriage and an ordination. And monasticism. That's not a that's not a sacrament. Yes, it is. That's not a sacrament. Depends who you ask. Schema. The seven stuff. Where's we already get this number seven from? Get it from the Pope of Rome. When? In the sixteenth century. <laughs> Why we get them from a Pope of Rome in the sixteenth century? That's what it's Roman scholasticism. Before that, you will never find in Orthodox literature seven sacraments. Because again, Tony Krapavitsky wrote openly against it. Okay. Do you find the sac sacraments in the New Testament? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes, yes, yes. So the sacraments are sacraments because they are given to us from the first time in New Testament. Every New Testament. Seems to go. Seems to go. And some of them go even to the Old Testament. But the New Testament is the one that makes the seven sacraments. It doesn't have to be because it's the number seven. You may be right, this is scholasticism or this is symbolism, but the seven sacraments are coming from the New Testament, not after that. From the first day that we have the church, we have the seven sacraments. Do we have monasticism from the first day? Yes. So who was the first monk? Or did you can't say we, the first we can from the gospel which is when Christ says to him uh, to people like go, go to sell everything and then you know uh, and follow me for instance you have the mother of God yeah. the mother of God devoting herself to be to, to be living a life of virginity John the Baptist okay we have example. virgin lives but we didn't have particular teleturgics as we have it now but from the first day, we have the sacraments there. So, who does the sacraments? The clergyman with the bishops. What the laymen do? Give donations. Give donations. What else? <laughs> what else? They become they, faithful. They pray. They are... They are they do good works of mercy, they spread the gospel themselves, they, they are involved in, in 
Really? So you go to... They community. save their soul. They That's save it. their soul. It's Is this a requirement for, for the lay only? That's for everybody. So what is for the lady? They utilize everything that they have about there to save their soul. That's it. What are the rights in the administrative structure? Their rights? Yeah. yeah. We are in America, everybody has rights. To be obedient. To be obedient, yeah. Well, that's that's their right. Right. So at the same time, they, they, they are also, according to Kolnikov, they take part in, in the acceptance of, of a, an ecumenical council's decision, for example. So if they help determine whether a council is a robber council or an orthodox council. Correct. So, and do we have historical examples that prove that point? Mm -hmm. Which is the most extreme such an example? Council. St. Mark of Ephesus. Correct. A council that everybody voted yes, with only one dissented vote. People, people exaggerate. This no, it's not exaggerate. It's, it's exaggerate. Not, it's not Three exaggerate. Three people voted no. Two of them later signed off after it was done, and it wasn't all the Orthodox in the world. There was three Serbian bishops that didn't go. Correct, but those that they go, they sign. Yeah, those are the ones that, that's not all orthodox. Hmm? That's not all orthodox. Why it's not the all orthodox? I'm telling you, three Serbian, Jersey, three Serbian bishops didn't go because they're, they're they didn't, to they go. didn't go. But from those, they went to the council, and the decisions are not made by everybody. They're made by those that they go to the council. And this particular council is counted by the Latin Church as an ecumenical council. I know, they are very productive. And the reason that they are very productive is because they do not keep the concept of the canon and the concept of the canons as a straight line. So they make one decision, they change the previous decision, they change the other decision, they add something, they subtract something, but then you don't have a straight line. You go zigzag. So you go to a church. What is the purpose of the right of the faithful? What is the purpose? The purpose and the right of the faithful. It was said in the class, I want it to be clear. Ephraim said it. Can you repeat it? To confirm the decisions of the Anything that these guys can do, and they go against the canon, the faithful have to stand where the canon is. And that's the reason that we have a canon. Now, the Catholic Church and the Protestants made decision which books are in the canon. We have Orthodox councils that reaffirm the canon, but no council made decisions upon the canons. Who made the decision which are the canons? The faithful with the clergy together reading these books in the church. Do we read all the books in the church? We don't read two. Why these two books are in the canons? Which are the books that we do not read in the church? It's and what else from the Old Testament? <coughs> okay, why? I'm not asking why we do not read these books. The question is how these books are part of the canon, part of the Old and New Testament, although we do not read it in the church. You have to be able to understand it. It's clean. Okay, it's so. And I want you to know, you go to serve in a community. So you're going to serve in the Russian community or in the Serbian community in Switzerland, right? Mm -hmm. Under one bishop. And you're going to serve to the Russian community here, correct? Under another bishop. 
and he's going to go to California, and he's going to serve under Bishop Gerasimus, probably, maybe. Okay. So, how all these bishops that speak different languages, they belong to different councils, they can have a unit. How do they work? I'm sorry. How all these bishops, all these communities, that they speak different languages, they belong to different councils, that are in different places, they can have a unity. Sure. You can go to your friend next door, who is the Roman Catholic, and that particular friend would tell you, hey guys, we have a unity, and our unity is clear. Is the Pope and defines upon everybody. Now, how do you know that we have a unity in your church? Through, through the same teaching and through the Eucharist. Okay. Is the Eucharist different in the Russian church, the Armenian church, the Georgian church, the Syrian church, the Greek church, the Albanian church? Yes. Is it different? Yes. There are a few things that are done different, different typicon. Not the Eucharist itself, not the body. It is the Armenian series. Oh, my, of course, yeah. If you, I mean, I'm not talking about heretics. I'm and not you talking. Just, you have to, you have to ask the questions more clear. Well, he okay. didn't say it clearly. I, did, I said it clearly, but I wanted, yeah. I wanted to like, cut you know, here. I mean, I, there are multiple choice questions. You have to put an error part. So, how do you know who is Orthodox? When I came to the United States, I went to study up at RPI with my friends. We wanted to go and visit all the churches in the area. So, anywhere we were seeing church that looked like an Orthodox or had something like an Orthodox, we are going to see that community. So, we were in Troy, New York. We started from the Greek Church of St. Basil, then we went to the Russian Church of the OCA of St. Basil in Waterloo. Then we went to the Ukrainian Church in Troy. Then we went to the Ukrainian Church in Waterloo. The priest was dressed up like all the previous three priests. The service was done like all the previous churches. But immediately, when one particular point came, we knew that we were not in an Orthodox church. What was that point and what was that fact? Why are you laughing? Commemorating the bishop? No. Uniacs commemorate the bishop exactly the same way that we commemorate the bishop. But they commemorate the Pope. But we didn't understand anything since we don't know Ukrainian. Was it how they gave communion? Correct. Mm -hmm. Wow. And not only how they gave communion, was how people received communion. So how people received communion in Orthodox Church? Two points. Body and blood. Everybody. Everybody. No. Mm -hmm. Those that are prepared, those that they had... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Grant for a confession, those that they were allowed to receive communion. As a result, not all the faithful go and receive. When we saw row after row people to go there, my friend says, we are in a wrong church, these guys are not Orthodox. Were they Orthodox? No, they were unions. But... I don't see a distinction because people in Greek Orthodox Church for them, the Calendar Church or Nocia Church, everybody gets up and goes to the meeting. That's, true. Not, That's so. not true. Oh, there's yeah, places. There's there's places. places. There, there are some priests and there are some bishops that they force them, particularly with the kids. This is in the entire parish. Yeah, I've been to the Turkey Church for everyone, row by row. Yeah, interesting. That, that's, why I'm, that's why I bring that point. If everybody goes row by row, then this particular community has a problem. A problem. <laughs> and I erase it 
Bishop Philip, when he was assigned to go as a bishop to Atlanta, he had to cut from the church three communities because of that. The priest included, and the communities included. Was he democratic? Very. So when do you want to cut part of the church? And cutting part of the church comes into two forms. He is a priest, and I go for a communion. He says, come for a confession. I go to him for a confession. I confess whatever I've done, and he says, abstain for some time. Easter for you is not a communion. We had a bishop in New York, he created a lot of problems, he was removed from his authority, he is not allowed to perform any sacraments, he was not defrocked, but he's not going to receive communion during that period, not even for Easter. Is this punishment? No. Why not? I have high blood pressure. I have problems with my heart. One of the things that I like the most is fresh baked bread. It's a fasting food. During other fasts, I was going mostly with bread. Did I touch any bread? Do I consider that as a punishment? <coughs> As priests, do you have to make decisions from your community people to be cut from sacraments? And that's one of the most painful decisions. That's the role of the father. So what's the big complaint that my son has for me when I perform my father beauty? I'm too strict. So what is the role of a father? Dmitri, mm -hmm. what is the role of a father? What the father does to the child? Maxim, a father. Not a priest, not a spiritual father, a father. What the father does to the child? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And what do you have to do to the child? You show them the limits. I have to show them the limits. And the child naturally wants to test where the limit is. Mm -hmm. So it goes out of the limit. So what the father does then? He whoops him. Punishment. Punishment. Mm -hmm. Not punishment. Correction. Correct. Okay. Correction, but correction with punishment. As the result, there are two words that are coming there in that particular relation, child and father. One is love. What is the other? The opposite. Uh, it's not the opposite. It's beauty. But it's not the beauty. And this word comes as a requirement also between the Father God and the human children. And that work and word and action should come also between the shepherds and the folk. One is love, mutual love. What's the other? Obedience. Obedience. Up to what point obedience? What is the, the word that we use? 
Can it be fear? Fear in terms of respect. Fear in terms of respect. But in Old Testament and in few places in the New Testament, the point that the parent, the father, the clergy have to be with the people is up to the point of a fear. Because if you have fear for something, you keep yourself in order and you don't do it. And this is a big difference between what we have to do here administering the Orthodox Church and how other people that conceive themselves as churches they have to have. We stick to the love, but is fear and punishment and obedience part of love or not? And I want you to put that in your mind that one of the important parts that you need to have here in the parish administration is that the role that the priest has is the role that provides the love, keeps the canons, keeps everything straight. Use your love and use your fear. Correct, in a way. What is the fear that the clergyman should have from the priest, from the layman? From losing souls. Correct. And if you can see someone who is a clergyman and is not respected from the layman, is it for reason or not reason? There's always a reason. There is always a reason. The reason so, doesn't have to necessarily be that the priest's fault. The no, could be the with the the, but the reason that we have to pay attention is that everybody's fear is going to be to stay on a camera. And these canons don't have to do anything else but ex extending that canon of the New Testament. And the previous canon of the Old Testament has to be modified according to what the new canon gives. As a result, that particular part, the 27 books, are those that are very important into what you have to administer in your communities. So what is the relationship here? Love and respect. Fear and respect. Punishment. How the punishment would be done. And what is good punishment and what is bad punishment? And it's very important here to know that the punishment is therapeutic. Dmitri, when is a therapeutic punishment? Well, that's why it's not punishment. Why it's not punishment? It's trying to be strength of the believer, of whom you give the believer punishment. You can't punish everyone. They're not punishing anyone. There's no punishment. Yeah, it's just... Or, whatever you call it, the correction has to be commensurate with what was done. Mm -hmm. It has to be... And it has to have a, 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 a positive... It should be done having, like, a positive effect. That's the idea. No, it's commensurate with the person. It's commensurate with the person and what the person can take. You right. can always apply the same what was done to every single person and it killed you. Yeah. That's, not what, that's not what I'm... I'm not, I'm not saying that as, as an absolute rule. I'm not saying that, that there, you have, apart from the person, I'm not saying that apart from the person, but it does, but, but the, the, the act, the, the correction must, must be effective Correct. to that person. And how we make that correction effective to that particular person, this is something 